Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the BH virtual event space. Very happy to welcome in to our little world over here, Chris Fain and Cliff Hausner from Profoto. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? I think you're still muted, Chris. Still muted. Oh, I think I'm unmuted now. And then I'm also apparently this way. I don't know which way to go. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Your face hey, how's it going, man? We got you. <laughs> how you doing today, Chris? Good, man. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. I'm super excited about this. I don't know about anybody else. Hopefully there's some people who are umbrella fans. I like the umbrella and that's what we're talking about today is we're talking about umbrellas. Really? I threw it in there. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Jim Carrey reference. You know, you gotta, you gotta throw it out there. Yeah. I uh, want to thank our sponsors over at Profoto for sponsoring this event. And I want to welcome everybody in who's joining us from YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, Zoom, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you so much. Just so everybody knows, Chris is going to be talking about umbrellas. Like I said, we've got Cliff in the background from Profoto. So if you have any kind of technical questions that you want to get in that maybe, you know, you're afraid to ask, you could throw them into the chat and, and Cliff can kind of answer you back secretly so not everybody has to hear them but we welcome all questions anyway so get them in uh if you're joining us here on any of those just use the comment section and we'll make sure to answer them uh chris as well will be throwing up a little qr code in the corner and i'll throw it into the chat as well this way you guys have it uh but that will basically enter you in it's going to say register for the event but that's actually just entering you in to win i believe cliff we said that you have a chance to win a c1 is that right you're, you're also muted, Cliff, but he's he's shaking his head. If you can't see it, he's shaking his head. For yes, the yeah. yes, there yes. You go. There you go. That is being that is being done directly through Profoto. So no no affiliation with B and H. So if if you don't win, send all the uh, the hate mail to Cliff. Okay. Uh, right. He'll write to Cliff. Email address. It, write to right. Cliff. Write to, right to Chris. Write to Chris. Put your email address up at the end of that. But uh, without further ado, thanks again for being here, gentlemen. I'm going to get out of the way so uh, you can take over the reins, Chris. Cool. Hey, everybody. What's up? Uh, this is, I call it umbrellas, really, because I think umbrellas, for the most part, people see them and you're like, oh, that's kind of like, like the starter light shaping tool. And I think that mindset behind umbrellas is a little bit limiting because they're pretty fantastic light shaping tools in general. The Let's talk, and and I'm gonna we're gonna be super honest during this whole thing. We're gonna talk pros and we're gonna talk cons. So let's jump into pros first. So the biggest pro with an umbrella is gonna be setup and breakdown time. I mean, if you've ever used an umbrella before, actually, I, I think this one's brand new. So I think we get it fresh out of the package. Oh, it is. I still have another. I have plastic. I have plastic wrap on. No, let's go right here for a second. But the um, I mean, think about setting up and breaking down an umbrella. You're done, right? Want to break it down? You're done, right? So setup and breakdown time is awesome. So if you're an on-the-go photographer and you need a, a quick, soft light setup, umbrellas are dynamite. Now, the cons, because everything has a pro and a con, right? So I always say this way, you kind of have to give up something to get something. So in order to get speed and of setup and breakdown, you have to give up some spots where you could get some damage. So an umbrella, the downside for an umbrella, the weak point is the actual umbrella shaft itself, right? So you want to make sure that whenever you are on location, that you are, um, you know, counterweighting your flash or anything like that, or you have someone who can hang on to it because it can act like a sail. The other cool thing about a lot of pro photo lights, like the B10s and stuff like that, is that our umbrella clamp is kind of spring loaded. So we try to design it so if the wind catches this thing, it'll just pull the umbrella out of the flash and it won't bring the flash down with it. That's not to say that it won't happen sometimes. It could, especially if it gets, gets it the wrong way. Uh, but we try to mitigate that with some design in our lighting. Uh, but that's a con on umbrellas. But the upside again is one, light shaping ability. So easy, super soft light that sets up and breaks down really, really fast. Cool. So that's kind of getting into the pros and cons of umbrellas. Let's start talking about the dynamics of uh, umbrella shape first and foremost. So in the pro photo world, I don't know how other umbrella companies do it, but in the pro photo world, we have two. We have a shallow umbrella. So it's buried here in my umbrella pile. Pardon me. Let's... Here we go. So we have a shallow umbrella. 
if you'd like to, you can. I'm going to be sitting here talking for a second. So you have a shell umbrella, and we have, let's get the same in deep so you can see the difference. And just so you know, I'm going to talk about all this stuff, but we're also going to set all this stuff up, take some photographs, pull that stuff up and capture one, and we can do some side-by-side -side so you can actually see visually the characteristics of the light in an actual photo. So, but let's talk about what they do in general. So if you look here, I'm gonna see. So you can kind of see just the shape difference there, right? So the shallow umbrella, one is a little less round. It doesn't have necessarily as many ribs, but what it does is it takes the light and it throws it really, really wide. So you can get a lot of nice coverage out of a, a, a shallow umbrella. Dynamite for group shots, uh, especially if you're working with one light and you need some coverage, really, really dynamite for group shots. Uh, another cool thing, this is something that Cliff taught me about, and, and if you want any more information on that, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to expand on it in the chat. But another thing that umbrellas do is the inverse square law actually applies to the light traveling to the umbrella and then back out. So this distance is calculated, the distance of the umbrella from the light is calculated in the distance of the light spread for your subject. So I'm sure he can ex expand on that, but the reason that that's important is if you're using one light with, uh, while you're shooting maybe a group of like three or four people, you're gonna wanna back that light up, but not too far because then you're gonna kind of lose the softness of the umbrella. But the nice thing is you're gaining some lights, you're gaining some um, of the photon spread uh, just by going into an umbrella without any type of diffusion or anything on top of that. So one light, back it up a little bit with a shallow umbrella. You can get some really good coverage on, you know, a group of three, four, maybe even five people, depending on how you place those human beings in the setup. Deep umbrella is just that. So you can see that it's a much, much deeper inset of the actual modifier itself. It uses more ribs, so it actually has 16 ribs as opposed to the eight ribs of the uh, shallow umbrella. Cool thing about that is it's a much more round shape, so it's not so octagonal. Uh, the catch light in the eye is nice and round. It's it's super flattering. But what a deep! <laughs> I definitely hit the I definitely hit the release, getting all excited. That was awesome. I don't think that's ever happened to me in my entire life. I'm so glad that it happened live. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. So uh, our new our, our new umbrellas have this really cool release and uh, I'm not used to it yet. And I clicked it with my finger. So that was awesome. Um, oh, nice. Someone even texted us. So they're probably like, Chris, you're a ridiculous human. Anyway, uh, the cool thing about a deep umbrella is it's really, really focused. So whereas the umbrella shallow is going to throw that light a lot wider because it, it the scoop is really, really wide. The deep umbrella is a lot more pointed and comparing finishes here in a few minutes, I'm going to, we're also going to talk about why that pointed look is so cool. Uh, but what's nice is it takes that light and it focuses it. So whereas normally with something like a soft box, uh, you know what, let's talk about one other kind of con to an umbrella. That's not that big of a deal, but it can be. Uh, umbrellas have some modifiers and we're going to talk about those today. But one of the things you can't really do with an umbrella is put a grid on the front of it. So you can't take a big, huge light source and kind of point it right where you want it. But that's kind of what's cool about a deep umbrella. So whereas the shallow is going to throw that light super wide, a deep umbrella is going to point that light out a little bit more. And then we're going to talk about some techniques to um, take that light and focus it even more. And it's going to involve a different one of the, the finishes of the umbrellas. Cool. Now, again, I'm going to talk about all this stuff first and foremost. That way you can, you can come up with some questions if you have them and we can talk about those. Uh, and then we're going to actually take some photos, which is really, really cool. So next, let's talk about finishes, why you'd want to use them, uh, what, what makes one better than the other. Uh, I don't know why I broke it down because it could have just started with the thing I was talking about. So let's talk about white. So a white finish umbrella is going to offer you a really, really smooth, even light. The cool thing about shooting with an umbrella is you're going in, at least with a bounced umbrella. So um, when you hear me talk about white, it's talking about the interior color. So a lot of people will see like the translucent umbrella and go, oh, that's white also. 
But usually when you're hearing someone talk about like a white umbrella or a silver umbrella, it's a bounced umbrella where the back fabric is black and it keeps any light spill from coming outwards. So white umbrella, white interior. Uh, if it's a shoot through umbrella or a translucent, we'll get to that in a second. It's just called a shoot through or a translucent. Back uh, no, ignore that. It's just a, a little window that pops up. Yeah. So the nice thing about the white umbrella is again, really, really even coverage top to bottom, side to side. So it's not, it's pointed, but it's really, really smooth. It gives a really nice natural look. So if you're trying to um, have an umbrella help you match, uh, maybe you're outside taking some photos and you want to just fill in on your subject, a white umbrella is really, really good for that. Uh, it's again, because it's bouncing in, you're not gonna have to worry about any hot spots, which is really, really nice. And then on top of that, you're gonna get this really smooth edge to edge, even coverage, really, really beautiful stuff. Now let's jump to its absolute opposite, which is the deep silver. I have bags and stuff everywhere. So silver, this is <laughs> probably one of the coolest setups. It's for someone just getting into an umbrella, I probably don't say go to the silver direction because silver is incredibly pointed. It's when you put a deep silver umbrella onto your light, I highly recommend turning on your continuous light and making sure that you have the light pointed right to where you want it to hit your subject uh, because it takes all the light. It's still soft and it's still utilizing a lot of the umbrella. But because it gathers it in such a way, it is very directional. So whereas that white umbrella is going to give you a lot more smooth edge to edge coverage, a little bit wider on the throw, this is very pointed. So you're still going to have soft light, but it's really contrasty. It's, it's really directional. So it's one of those things that it's a beautiful light. I love it. I love shooting with a silver umbrella. I think sometimes people who are just getting into light shaping because of that pointedness scares them a little bit. Don't be scared of it. I'll show you another way that you can kind of uh, help it. Uh, so if you want something that's really versatile, maybe look into the silver direction because it's, it's a really nice light shaping tool. Now let's talk about the translucent. So the translucent umbrella and the white umbrella have very, very similar characteristics as far as the light quality that you're going to get out of them. The one difference, well, there's two differences really. So with a shoot through, you're actually taking that light and you're shooting through it. And the light, the umbrella from this side is what's actually illuminating your subject. So if you ever hear a shoot through umbrella or translucent umbrella, they're the same thing. You're just shooting the light through and the backside of the umbrella is lighting your subject. The thing that I said earlier about that inverse square thing where the light hits the umbrella and then travels back, that only matters with the bounced umbrellas. Once the light hits this and this becomes the light source, this is now where that inverse square law starts. It starts at the end of this where the, the actual light is. So with the bounced umbrellas, it's true where the light bounces up and bounces out inverse square with a translucent shoot through, it starts here, not at the light. Just so you know that. That way, so I don't get any hate mail or anything like that whenever uh, someone's shooting and it's not doing what they wanted to do. So if this looks so much like a white umbrella, what are the advantages? So the advantage of shooting with a shoot through umbrella is if you need to work in even closer proximity, because you're firing the umbrella, this is going to be really weird, so I apologize. But because you're, following, you're firing the umbrella right at your subject, you can move this in a lot closer and you can work at shorter working distances. So you're still going to get a really nice, soft, even light. One other thing that you could potentially get with a shoot through because the light is going through it is you could get a hot spot. There is the possibility of that happening. Uh, whereas with like a bounced umbrella, you're not necessarily going to get, especially with the bounced white, you're not going to get that, but a lot shorter working distances. So if you're, you know, maybe you're shooting a CEO in his office and you don't have the, you may not necessarily have the space to get the light up and back or something like that. Translucent umbrella is dynamite for that because again, you can work at much shorter working distances while still keeping a really nice, soft, beautiful quality of light. So we've gone through shapes. We've gone through, uh, you know, we haven't talked about, we'll talk about sizes here in just a second because I think that's important. Um, but we've gone through the different finishes. 
Let's talk for a couple of seconds about some accessories that you can use for your umbrellas to turn them into something else and be, it'll be good to go. And foremost, a diffusion panel. So earlier when I was talking about what would be a good option for maybe someone who's getting into light shaping, right? That likes the idea of having a silver umbrella, but they're a little bit worried about how specular it could be or how pointed it could be. This would be a dynamite to have for something like that. So whereas you would have, pardon me, I'm gonna stop talking while I'm crackling like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So the cool thing about this diffusion panel is it's going to turn your softbox into, or it's going to turn your umbrella into a softbox. So what you now, Chris, uh, I, okay, all right. I thought we lost your audio for a second. I think, oh, okay, all right. You're good. You're good. Oh, we're good. We got you. Yeah. The umbrella. Oh, maybe it's going a little crazy. So for the umbrella the easy you know, nope, I, think, the I think i think we're i think we're having some audio difficulties just a bit i think it might be just popping it could out. i could be my lot my lob being turned let me switch sides really fast could you hold that for me for a second now we're a little better any issues now good i think we're okay okay cool i think maybe i think maybe i started blocking it with all the umbrella stuff so cool um what you want to do is you just put the diffusion panel inside or the umbrella through the opening of the diffusion panel and open the umbrella. Nice. So now you've turned your silver umbrella into a softbox. The cool thing about that is, is you can maintain all the efficiency of the silver underneath while still keeping the light relatively smooth and even with a diffusion panel. So if you're looking for an umbrella that's going to give you, you know, the ability to point it out really you know, get a really pointed light source, multiple looks out of an umbrella, which is kind of wild. Uh, a silver umbrella with a diffusion panel as an accessory is dynamite. You could put the same diffusion panel onto your, um, onto both the, um, the translucent and the white. It's traditionally made for the silver and the white finished umbrellas, but you can do some really cool stuff with the translucent where you turn it into this uh, really cool single light source that can, depending on the size of the room, can illuminate your subject from the front, but broadcast some light around the room to act as a kind of a, a nice little fill. So that's kind of a cool little setup. Thanks Cliffy for that one. Um, really, really neat stuff. Uh, when you pair the diffusion panel with the white umbrella, it just takes that smooth, even looking light and it just smooths it out just a little bit more. Very, very nice. So then I wanna to try to keep this from getting super. Got it. Yeah. And then you have something called a back panel. This is made for, whereas you can use the diffusion panel on the, um, the translucent umbrella and make this cool setup, the back panel you should probably not put onto the silver or the white or else you're not actually going to get any light out of it. That would be really tragic for you. So as you can tell, the back of it's black, so there would be no light coming out whatsoever. But the cool thing about this paired with a translucent umbrella, just like we were talking about with the... Um, the diffusion panel throwing some light backward and acting as a little bit of extra fill, especially if your room is a nice white light color uh, and some might even be smaller. The back panel is going to do just the opposite. So first and foremost, so you can see the inside of it. The inside of the back panel is white, so it will reflect light back forward. So let's pop this open. But the back panel does just the opposite of what the diffusion panel does. This stops light from bouncing all over the place. So this is going to keep your light in the vicinity of where you are shooting in the first place, uh, while also reflecting some of that light that was coming back towards the front of the light again. So it's, it keeps the light relatively efficient. So this is also really cool for turning the umbrella into a lantern. So maybe if you're going for uh, a room light everywhere, you could, you could mount this up high and you have this nice uh, 180 degree light source, which is really, really cool. Uh, you could do the same thing again with the diffusion panel if you wanted some of that light to bounce off the ceiling, uh, but really, really nice accessory. So there are some really cool ways that you can actually modify your umbrellas. Sweet. And then let's talk. Shallow umbrellas only come in two sizes. They come in a small shallow and a medium shallow. The one that 
uh, size wise is the medium. So this is the biggest shallow that we offer. Uh, if you want to see like my watermelon cranium in relationship to the size of the umbrella, uh, hopefully that's cranium is for reference. Um, uh, it's pretty big. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it's the real deal. So those are your two sizes in your shallow umbrellas. Now in your deep umbrellas, variation. So we have a small, which is about 33 inches. We have the medium, which is what I've been showing. Everything is just for ease of kind of holding that. But about 44 inches, you know, about 56 with the large and six. I think we, uh, I think we lost your audio again, Chris. And how about now? Are we? Yeah. Uh, let me, let me get a test again. Now I can't. You can't. Now I can. It's kind of, kind of fading in and out. Yeah. Out. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this thing because I'm wondering if that's cross talking. Is everything good? Can you still hear me? Now I can hear you. Yeah. Cool. I was uh, maybe we. I think, we I think there was another transmitter on causing some cross talk. My apologies. No problem. So where where did um where did I cut out? You're talking about the differences between the shallow and the deep. Yeah. There's more variety in deep. Yeah. So like I said, with the the shallow umbrella, we had um you know the small and the medium size, really really nice, but. When you get to the deep sizes, you have much more uh, size variations. So the four sizes, again, are the small, just in case this part is the part that cut out. The small, 33 inches. The medium, about 42 to 44 inches. I can never remember the number exactly. Uh, same thing with the, the largest, somewhere between 52 and 56 inches. And I know the extra large is 65. For some reason, I can always remember that one. So that's just one of those things where you have to start asking yourself, what kind of working distances do I normally use? You know, are you backing up a little bit in comparison to your subject? If you back up a little bit in comparison to your subject, or you maybe you always shoot full body, that's your style. Maybe you want to start looking into maybe like the large or the extra large. That way you can maintain the softness while still having nice coverage, especially with those working distances. Is If, if you work in much tighter spaces uh, or you shoot generally closer up, maybe you want to look towards the small or medium size and the deep umbrellas. That's kind of the way that you need to think about choosing the right size modifier. I think sometimes people will just go, give me the biggest modifier you have uh, while not really thinking about the way they work or what works for them. And then you try to jam a five foot octa into a small working space. And you're like, why do I hate my life so much? And it's because you bought a five foot octa for a six foot working space. So we've talked about sizes, shapes, finishes, and accessories. Let's look at them. Let's take some photographs and actually see what the difference of all this stuff is. So we're going to, what is this? Oh, gotcha. Capture one is up. My, gotcha. My pro photo device is up. So let's do this. So lighting wise today, just so if anyone asks what we're using, I have a B10X plus uh, that we're going to be shooting with as the light provider. The, um, we're only going to do one light. I'm going to keep the light locked into one i'm going to keep the light locked into one place so that um we can really see the difference between spreads the one thing that i can't control is that i do have to turn the head around for the shoot through stuff so it might not be the perfect approximation of the light i'll try to adjust it for that but just know that's the only variable that'll change a little bit so let's start with the white umbrella cool so it's I mean, I think we could stay right where we are right now. Okay. You wanna you wanna you know, I was just saying you can kill the QR code if you wanted to. Cool. Sweet. So let's get you over here, Kate. So this is Kate. She's been running all the technical stuff and she's also gonna stand in front of the camera. Uh there we go. So uh, another little thing that I like to do for umbrellas um, is I like to try to keep the light around eye line or a little bit higher uh, because light is hitting here towards the bottom and kicking that forward as well. Sometimes it can up light unless you're shooting a horror movie picture. We want to try to avoid that. 
Uh, so I try to always keep the light at eye level or a little above. I'm going a little bit above because I think that's the right move. Uh, we're going to be shooting on a white background. Let's have you take a step that way. All good. So maybe maybe hang out like right here between these two leaves of, of the, the thing on this rug. Cool. And I'm going to try to keep the light. We're probably six feet from you. Umbrella. Umbrella. Six feet. The umbrella is probably six feet from Kate. Uh, and we're going to try to I'm going to try to lock. I'm going to lock these wheels down so we don't lose this stuff. So. That way you can, we can get a good accurate representation of the light spread and all that good stuff. So let's make sure we're on the right channels. Group A, boom. Cool. I'm gonna pull up my connect. And we should be good to go. So let's get the light camera, everything set up. Hopefully you can all still hear me just fine. So here we go. I'm going to do uh, pretty much going to take these in TTL just because we're going to be changing the light setup so much. But uh, this should be a pretty good representation of stuff. I'm going to keep this shot relatively wide. We're locked down in place. Uh, let's, oh, nope, that would be super bad. That was awful. Apparently, I'm not really into doing my stuff too well. There we go. Make sure that my settings are good. All right, here we go. Kate, ready? There we go. I couldn't get my camera to focus. So here we go. Three, two, one. So that is the shallow umbrella, white. So let's go. And actually, do you want to broadcast these photos after we shoot them all? Uh, yeah, I think so. Just hang hang there for just one second. I need to make sure that my um. Oh, I'm in FP sync mode. I don't need to be in that. I need to be in front curtain. Here we go. Let's try one more time. Three, two, one. There we go. Perfect. So let me just label this one so I can remember it. Uh, perfect. And then let's flip out to now the deep white. You know what, Let, maybe let's put it up on the screen so they can actually see the images as they're coming in. Yes. Just as long as you're between those leaves at the edge, yeah. Because. that way. Yeah, you can actually see what we're doing. Super source it, nice. Very cool. So now we have the deep white. Again, we're still kind of locked in place. She's got her spot on the floor. So we're going to, is that turn towards you right there? Yes. Okay, good. There we go. So let's take the shot. Three, two, one. Beautiful. So let's go, let's label this deep white. Perfect. So we're gonna throw the silver on now and hopefully with the um, the angle that you have forward, you're actually going to be able to see what I was talking about with the uh, modeling light and why you kind of need it with the silver. So I have a feeling that the light position of this is probably pointed more towards Kate's torso than it actually is uh, her face, and we want to eliminate her face. So let's turn this on. So. From what I can see, much more in line with the torso. I'm going to show you the trick that I just did here in just a second. Because it's something that's really, really cool about the silver umbrellas. So again, we just kind of want to make sure that the light, you can kind of see it moving a little bit right there. And honestly, it probably needs to come up some because it's uh, it will start to light under her face so this is kind of one of those things again you want to use the continuous light on your silver umbrellas because it's very different in the way that it points the light so here we go three two one very very cool so let's name this one silver out so 
because the silver umbrella is so pointed and it's so focused, you can actually take the umbrella itself and push it closer to the light. And it's going to utilize a different portion of the actual fabric itself. And it's going to take that light beam and it's going to tighten it up a lot. This is what I was talking about, how the silver umbrella can be one of the most versatile umbrellas as far as like getting multiple looks out of the modifier. And then if you need to soften it up a little bit, you hit it with the diffusion panel and it smooths it out really, really nicely. So just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here, I'm actually going to zoom the umbrella closer to the light like this, kind of jam it right in on there. And then when Kate jumps back over here, I'm going to use the continuous light that I just kicked on to make sure that it's hitting her right where I need it to. So that was it right there. So perfect. And this is going to point the light out a lot more. It's going to look vastly different. Here we go. Three, two, one. Very, very cool. It's maybe a touch overexposed, but I'm okay with it. Let's see. Let's go here. I need to bring my brightness up on my computer because I can't really see today. There we go. Lovely. All right, perfect. So now that we've taken the, uh, the shot zoomed in and zoomed out, we're going to switch over to the translucent. I'm going to try to keep the light in a, a manner that's kind of fair to the way the light's thrown, but it still should be different enough that hopefully you can see what we're talking about. So I'm going to, yes, yeah, to rotate. I'm going to quickly take one of my mark my tape markers because I'm gonna have to move the light stand mm -hmm. and I'm gonna want to bring it back. Actually, let's do this. Since we're just gonna do a comparison, I'm gonna bring the I'm gonna bring everything up. Let's take the diffusion panel shots first. Yeah. Okay. Because then I can move the uh, light stand to where I want it. So we're gonna take the diffusion panel shot and we're gonna do it with the silver just so you can again see the difference in um using a diffusion panel and not using a diffusion panel. And that way, whenever I move the light, I don't have to worry about having of a, having affected the uh, the difference between the silver with and without diffusion. So here we go. Again, just insert the umbrella into the opening of the diffusion panel and open the umbrella. And then it only half works like that because we're live and I'm good at embarrassing myself. So perfect. Love it. So light goes on there, you want to make sure, especially if you're using like a D1 or a D2 or a pro head, something with a really hot modeling light, you want to make sure that you get this umbrella diffuser, diff diffuser past the flash tube, especially if you're using like, like I said, on the D1 or D2 or a pro head, a really hot halogen modeling light. You, you don't want it. You don't want that heat just sitting on the diffusion panel. It's not good. So let's go here. All good. And then because the, it's going to hit the diffusion panel, it should smooth out quite nicely. I just want to make sure it's not interrupting that. Perfect. So here we go. Three, two, one. Lovely. So let's label this when it comes in. Silver. Use. I think I definitely spelled that wrong. Cool. And then I just want to make sure that I have um, this one right here is silver zoomed, silver zoomed. Perfect. So we're keeping things labeled. We're staying organized. I like it because it's not my strong suit. <laughs> Sweet. So now. We're going to do uh, the shoot through umbrella. And again, we're going to compare all this stuff here in just a moment. So you'll be able to see all the images side by side. You'll see exactly what the differences are. Some of them are subtle. Some of them are a little more dramatic, but still really good stuff to know. So all right, I'm rocking and rolling here. So now the lights general, the Flash has generally been there. So let's 
it might just be a thing where I need to rotate this, the light stand while leaving the light where it's at. No, I think as long as I keep the light. You want me to put an X under the middle? No, it doesn't need to. Don't worry about it. All right. I just need to do this. Yeah. Cool. So I've tried my best to keep the light source in the same spot. Again, the point of a translucent umbrella is to give you a little bit more working, uh, close proximity working distance. So we're not necessarily, I'm trying to just keep the light size in relationship with the subject the same, uh, but really this is good for being able to get closer to your subject like we talked about. So let's go up above the eye line. Again, try to keep this part at eye line or a little above if you can. Uh, the bottom can sometimes tend to up light and we don't want that. So here is translucent with nothing on it. Three, two, one, pop. Beautiful light quality. Let's go. Cool. Now let's lower this down. Let's put a back panel on it. Uh, okay. No, I got it. Thank you, though. Cool. So umbrella through the back panel. Pop it open, and there we go. So. Very cool. Let's just. Are there any questions for Chris? I think we're saving them to the end. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so it should be. Right. We can. It's all good. It's that way we can kind of just keep it all at the same spot and we're not interjecting. And but do if anyone has any questions about stuff or something that you might want me to demo when we have time, let me know. I'll be more than happy to show that as well. So here we go with back panel. Three, two, one, pop. Cool. So let's, oh, I didn't mean to start. Let's go, oh, come on. Translucent. And then just for funsies, let's throw the diffusion panel on it because again, it's something that you can use as a, an extra little accessory for um, a translucent umbrella to throw some more light around the room if you need it to. So. It just acts as a front and a back source. So. If I haven't said it enough, put the umbrella through the opening of the diffuser or the back panel, and then just make sure it's not hung up and then just open it up, Oops, just like that. So cool, again, so now we're gonna have a, a, a light source here and a light source here, the idea being this light source will go direct to Kate. This light source will illuminate kind of around the area. So like the ceiling and stuff like that, uh, or a wall if it's close to it, and it's going to act as a little additional fill light. So let's go here. Let's make sure that perfect. And then uh, all right, here we go. Three, two, one, perfect. So those are our lights and modifiers. So let's go translucent, perfect. Awesome. So let's pull this laptop in here and let's talk about the differences. And you know what the cool thing is, is I labeled everything. So I actually know what the heck I'm talking about today. Sometimes I have to kind of sort through it and it's, uh, it can be a mess. Should I go this way? Let's go this way. We'll go this way. We have room to do it today. So let's start off with shallow versus deep. Let's go full screen. So for the most part, um, if you want to actually, if you want to, we could probably just go, yeah, let's just do that. So for the most part, they're pretty similar. So the deep uh, and the, 
honestly, the deep and the shallow here, I'm looking for the differences to show. They're pretty even themselves. Uh, where you're probably going to see a little bit more, uh, dr uh, more of a dramatic increase is between like a silver shallow and a silver deep. Uh, but get, again, because the white is so smooth, uh, it's really, really hard to get it to change too much. But they both do a really, really good job of throwing the light quite wide, nice and smooth. I mean, if you look from top to bottom, there's no real hot spots. Really, really smooth light, top to bottom. That's what's so beautiful about a white umbrella. And that's why they're, they're such great light shaping tools. So, but as far as coverage, I mean, I can probably see a little, little darkness here. It's a little darker, whereas this is a little more even edge to edge because the light's being thrown more even. Uh, whereas something like in the deep realm is going to spot out a little bit more. They're roughly the same size, so the light softness is going to be roughly the same, and you can tell that by looking at the shadow here on both the shallow shot and the, um, I'm sorry, by looking at the shallow shot, looking at the deep shot. I'm going to rotate you to camera. Okay, we're going to go this way? Yeah. Cool. I'm here. I'm rotated. You can find me, you can find me over here rotated. Is that good? Okay. Oh, you know what? I just thought about something. Pardon me. For a split second, I think this thing that probably is way better. Yeah, we're good. Cool. So, um, sweet. Let's talk about finishes. Not diffuse. We want silver, and then we want translucent. So, this is where things get a little more interesting. So, because your um, kind of bouncing around a little bit more. Uh, you know what, let's do this because we talked about this. We'll talk about silver separately. We'll bring that up here in just a second, but I want you to see side by side kind of the difference of what you're going to get with a shoot through umbrella versus a white bounce umbrella. So because the shoot through umbrella is allowing light to kind of project all over the room. So it's bouncing backwards. It's going up, down, left, and right. It's doing a really good job of making this nice, even, background it's if you look at the light on kate with the white because it is a little more pointed and there's just a little more control with the light you can see that it starts to fall off a lot more down here lower whereas here on the shot with the translucent umbrella because there's more fill it's less contrasty which is nice uh, but you're getting even uh, you're getting more even light top to bottom no hot spots whereas here there could be you know, a, it could just be the contrast increase from the light being pointed uh, because it's not really a hot spot, but there is some more contrast there. So, but the translucence, very, very smooth, very even. So now let's, let's drop the uh, translucent from the shot. And let's just talk about the difference between and white and, and the two ways that you can use this. So first and foremost, the silver, oh, Chris. Can I, yes. can I interrupt for a second? There was a More question that, that are asking, um, are you changing camera settings and or light intensity when you change modifiers? Yes, only light intensity. So I want my cameras. So the question is, I know everyone heard Cliff talking about it, but just in case, someone was asking, what was I changing uh, in relationship to the different shots? So my camera, I was shooting in manual. So my camera stayed set the same, F8. Uh, one 250th of a second ISO 160. What I did is I shot each one of those shots in TTL mode. The reason I did that is because one, all the, the way that the light behaves with the different finishes or whether I'm shooting through or bouncing is either going to add more light or it's going to take away more light. So I allowed, so here's something that I know about TTL. TTL is trying to make your scene 18% gray it doesn't care about anything else, okay? Or it's at least it's trying to make the thing that you're metering for. So if you're in spot meter, it's trying to make the thing that you're metering for 18% gray. Kate is wearing white with a tan hat on a white background. So for the most part, it's gonna have a pretty easy time making those decisions as far as exposure goes. So I just relied on TTL to make those changes for me. Uh, the difference is, 
between something like a white umbrella and a silver umbrella, you're probably going to have about a stop light difference between the two. And especially once you start jumping into this, um, this pointed one, it's really efficient. It's almost as efficient as something like a zoom reflector. So it, you're going to gain a lot of output from that. So I allowed TTL to adjust my power settings up or down based on the modifier and the distance. So that's the only thing that changed. I didn't look at the actual power when I was doing it, so I can't tell you what the exact numbers were, uh, but that's what was changing, not the camera settings. Hopefully that helped. Sweet. Um, so the cool thing about, again, when we were talking about silver, Silver offers you a lot of options as far as how you can make the umbrella look different. So look right here, just first and foremost. So one, it's already contrasty. It's much punchier than the really smooth white umbrella look that you're getting. You can see that there's starting to be a lot more fall off to the edges. So it tapers nicely, uh, but it gives you kind of a little bit more of a dramatic look. I could even do this one better. I could pull Kate from the background and bring the light closer to her. And then that background is going to go even darker. It's going to, it's going to really bring that contrast up even more. What's cool about the silver though, is because it's so pointed, we can take that umbrella, like I was saying, and we could push it closer to the light. And now look at this, look at the shadow difference between the pointed shot and the zoomed out shot. This is starting to harden the light up some, so you're getting some of that nice, uh, here, let's zoom in here and look at some of the shadow characteristics. So it's still got some diffusion here on kind of this line of demarcation from, from the light to the shadow. So it's still soft, but it has this really crisp, hard reflector look to it that's, that I love. It's, it's one of my favorite modifiers. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is why I think the silver umbrella is, doesn't get utilized enough in photography. Uh, you can really get something that looks nice and soft, but kind of punchy here. And then you can really jam that umbrella down into the light, especially the silver umbrella shallow isn't going to give you as much of a difference as the deep is because that deep really takes that light, scoops it and throws it forward. The, the deep umbrella is really going to be super dramatic like this when you're doing that zooming technique. So along the lines of getting those multiple looks out of this, now we bring in the silver with diffuser. Where are you at? Silver diffused. And now look at this, right? So you have your white umbrella right here, no diffusion. Then you have a silver umbrella right here with diffusion. Subtle differences. You can see that the shadow is a touch harder. So it's, the light is hitting the diffuser at a certain size. So that pointedness is filling the diffuser in a certain way, but it's still, it's really smooth on that transition from shadow to, uh, so it's called the line of demarcation. So from the shadow to the background, it's still a really smooth transition. So you can kind of see that right there up close, but look at the coverage. You're getting some nice coverage on the background that you're not getting on the silver when you're not diffusing it out. Right. And then when you're pointing it, you're definitely not getting the coverage because look at that vignette, that just nice natural vignette it makes. Really cool stuff. So, this is why I say that I think the silver is the most versatile because you can go zoomed out, zoomed in, hit it with a diffuser. You could even zoom it with the diffuser on and use a different part of the diffusion panel itself and still get another look out of that. So, it's all really, really cool stuff. But if you love the look and the smoothness of the white, but you want the options here of having different looks, man, just a diffusion panel makes a world of difference. So let's jump into diffusion, or uh, I'm sorry, shoot through stuffs, because that's always fun. And we're going to do them all together because why not? So I believe the first one is the translucent by itself. The second one is the back panel and then the diffuser. So subtle differences, it's probably not gonna be dramatically different, but let's just start by looking at the shadow on the background. So because the back panel, or sorry, because the shoot through umbrella didn't have anything impeding it as far as um, light coming backwards, it hit more of the room. It had more energy going back, hitting the room. You know, we have a, a big 
uh, garage door right there that is, is white on the back. We have white ceilings, white walls, other than you know a couple black shelving units. Um, but look how low the contrast is. Look at the difference between the shadow here, how dark the shadow is here, and how dark the shadow is here. And then again, even more so, look at the difference between how dark the shadow is here on the back panel shot versus where the shadow is on the diffusion shot. So there's it's a little less contrasty without the diffusion panel because we're using a larger room to actually get some of that light bouncing around. If you're in a smaller space or you're backed up against a wall or you're closer to the ceiling, using the diffusion panel method right here is going to also kind of help smooth that light out across you know, the surface that you're trying to bounce and bring that back. But because the back panel is eliminating that and it's taking all that lighting, pushing it forward, we're getting less room bounce. And that is causing the contrast to increase slightly. Again, some of this stuff is incredibly detail oriented. Like you have to be looking for it, but this is the things that you need to know when you're making your decisions about why you're choosing the modifier that you're choosing. So maybe you want to touch more contrast. Maybe you want some more stuff in the shadows. Maybe back panels where it is, or maybe you need a back panel because most of the walls are painted a color that you don't want reflecting back onto your subject. That's why you go with the back panel. So just things like that are what you want to think of when you're making those decisions. So hopefully that was some good information. I mean, I'm, I thought, you know, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, we'll go here. Let's just go here. Cause it, that way, if someone pops up on the screen, I can actually feel like I'm talking to them. <laughs> so that's, what's so cool about umbrellas is they're a, you, at its core. They're like this rudimentary light shaping tool that pops open and closes like this, right? You use them when it's raining outside if you wanted to. Uh, not photographic ones, don't do that. But um, set up and break down, super easy. But you can actually, if you know how to use them and you know what the light is actually doing, they can produce some really, really awesome results. Again, if you're trying to take, if, if you're doing a lot of outside portraiture and you're trying to just have a nice smooth, light shaping tool that's going to kind of fill back in uh, some of that sun, maybe that's coming from behind your subject, go with a, a shoot through or go with the white diffusion. That way it looks nice and natural. Uh, if you're looking for something that says, hey, like I've definitely got a flash on this human being, go silver because you can you could zoom it in and punch it up. You can zoom it out and still get some of that contrast, some of that snap that you get from that silver look. Or if you just need to even it out, if you decide to go with one umbrella, Go with silver and a diffusion panel. And then if you're doing that outside thing, just pop a diffusion panel over it. So I think they're really, really awesome light shaping tools and uh, don't ever diminish them because they're very, very cool. So any questions from any, anyone? Anything I can answer? Definitely. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I will say thank you to Chris. So thank you very much for, for presenting this to us. Uh, but but I think an even bigger thanks goes to uh, Kate because I mean you know Kate Kate was really like the star over here she was the model she was the thousand star. percent I, I mean you know like you press the You're button welcome. Was, it's fun. So you just press the button that's all <laughs> <laughs> trust me in this relationship I'm the one who pushes buttons so like I have to I fear for my life a lot. Excellent. So uh, before we get into the questions, I just want to make mention again, if anybody joined us late, uh, Chris has this little QR code up in the corner of the right hand screen. Uh, that is going to take you to a website where you can be entered into win a uh, pro photo C1. Uh, I dropped it in the chat as well. So you guys could reference that. But uh, just a caveat for anybody who's interested, I just want everybody to know this is being done strictly through pro photo. b &H has no affiliation with it. So uh, it's a raffle. If you don't win, I have no control over that. Send we, we've already said it. Send Cliff all those nasty messages. So, uh, so Jose is joining us on Facebook wanted to know uh, before you were talking about limited spaces, uh, from smallest to the largest size umbrella, what would you recommend using with a speed light or something like, you know, maybe the A1 uh, to achieve the same or at least come close to the same results as what you're doing now with a strobe? So I've done with my, my A10, uh, I use the large size a lot. So here, let me just show you this. And honestly, I've used the extra large with really good results. You can, um, 
so this is the the large size I use this large size umbrella with my um, my A series all the time. So, and just so you can kind of see how how it's, I've used the heck out of this white one. This is one of my favorites. But a nice size, um, good coverage. I mean, I'm I'm five nine, five ten ish. Uh, my buddy John Day would say five nine. Um, but it gives good coverage as far as like head to knees. So you could just back it up a little bit and you could get some good coverage with the large. And, and I've done, I've shot with this with a single A10 and gotten incredible results. So, <clears throat> so I would say large is, would be the sweet spot. Medium to large would be the sweet spot for like a speed light or an A10. Uh, but you could still 100% use the extra large if you needed to. I would just say once you start getting to the, the big extra larges, you're probably backing up a little bit uh, to get it into the scene you probably the 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 limiting factor is probably not coverage the limiting factor is probably like are you getting enough power to the light and then back to your subject so that's another variable you want to think of so if you're going too big you're gonna have to back it up to keep it out of the frame do you have enough juice yeah makes makes a lot of sense now uh as a as a follow-up to that we've got another question coming in here uh regarding flashes instead of strobes and uh can you use a stroke? Oh, sorry. Can you use something like a flash with uh, one of the deep umbrellas as well? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You can use you can use any type of light source that you want to. It could be like a small speed light type device, or you could use. I mean, heck, you could you know up to like a Pro Eleven or something like that, or you know even with a uh, constant light. So like you know some of our video lights have umbrella ports for them. So you can still get a you can still make, especially with a silver umbrella, you can still make it do all of that stuff with a small flash or a big constant light. It's just- Chris, I'm gonna interrupt just, just for one thing I, I, that I would recommend is that you, if you're going to use a speed light is that you use something with a round front so that you're filling out as much of that umbrella as possible. If you're using one that's more of a, um, uh, more of a rectangular shape, it's not gonna work as well. Would, um, Cliff, would a Stofen help that at all? Mm, it could or is it, it still too is it too st still too rectangular yeah and i think i think you're also going to have another loss of light of course in terms yeah of intensity yeah so so that's a that's a good little input portion of it and again it's mostly because like cliff was saying you're you want the light to be thrown even top to bottom side to side whereas some of the the more rectangular things don't necessarily do that so just something to keep in mind it may not be it may give you a close effect but it may not be the exact effect Gotcha. Now, uh, Jerry's joining us on YouTube, wanted to know, uh, with something like the shallow umbrellas, can you use the diffusers on those shallow umbrellas as well? Yes, 100%. Uh, really quick. I'll just show you. So same. And it's the same. Um, it's this. Oh, it's actually on the it's actually on the light. So it's the same diffuser for the, the deeps and the or for the deeps and the shallows. So here. So just through the middle. Caught on the edge there, but yes, 100%. So there's your, there's your shallow with the diffuser. Works just fine. Excellent. And now uh, as a follow-up to that, uh, any, any comment, I know we didn't address it at all uh, in this, but uh, any comment about gold umbrellas? So we don't make any gold umbrellas. Um, but a gold umbrella is essentially just going to take the shot and warm. It's just the same thing as like a, a gold reflector. It just takes the, the light and it makes it warmer. Sometimes it's better to do that with gels, I think, than necessarily using a gold umbrella. Because like if you invest in a gold umbrella, like it just does that one thing. Whereas if you just got a regular, like a silver or a white umbrella. And if you need it to be warmer, one, you can control the warmth of it with, uh, you know, going quarter, half or full CTOs if you need to warm that up. Uh, whereas if you buy a gold umbrella, you're kind of just stuck with a gold umbrella. So gold have the same punch as silver? a gold should have the same punch as this. So Kate, Kate was asking, would the gold have the same punch as the silver? Uh, it should because it's still a metallic surface and that something about that metallic surface is what takes that light and points it really, really hard. You're just going to get a really warm pointed light. Whereas if you go with gels, 
you're infinitely variable. You could go the creative route and throw like a peacock blue on there. Or if you just need to round out like some fluorescent lights, you could throw a, a half plus green on there. So <clears throat> you could with a gold, yes. Uh, gold's just gonna make it warmer. I would generally shy away from it unless you just love the specialty look of, a, if, if a gold umbrella is your look, get yourself a gold umbrella. Uh, but I think most people probably wouldn't. Great. Excellent. Well, maybe, uh, maybe there's somebody out there listening to this. They want to, they want to keep, keep track of you, Chris. They want to, they want to find more of your work, follow along. Where can, where oh, can they find you? Here, we can do this. So, so you can actually just see it straight up because we're so cool and technologically advanced. Here, we're going to take the umbrella thing down. That's me. You can follow me in social at the Chris Fain. How convenient. So that's that's literally all my social stuff. So you can get, me, get at me on Twitter. You can get at me on Instagram. Facebook is a totally different beast, but you can get at me through there. Um, we're in the, the Pro Photo Share the Light group uh on on facebook so you can go there and there's a whole bunch of us pro photo uh maniacs helping people with stuff and sharing all kinds of fun stuff so but that's how you can find me awesome well i want to thank you again as well to kate uh cliff who i think had to run uh thank you to cliff as well uh and everybody at pro photo thank you so much for sponsoring the event uh that is all the time we have for now we'll catch you guys very shortly you don't have to wait too long to see us again